Good morning everybody. 15 below zero. Clear skies. I'm gonna buzz Melissa. She has to run up north today for work and then buzz her down to the office. The roads were so bad yesterday it's just hard to say how they're gonna be today. And I really have nothing going on except for playing around in the workshop. I drove Melissa up north for work and we stopped at the country kitchen and had lunch and then drove back here. The roads weren't bad for about half of that drive up but some of it was pretty pretty icy still. Good morning everybody. 27.9 below zero right now. Didn't quite make it to 30 below. I put wood in the stove yesterday two times uh, yesterday evening and it was still 34 degrees in the shop. I was just out there and started the stove again so it should warm up pretty quick. Well, it's uh, 6.21 in the evening right now. Uh, today I did a, I had a bunch of stuff I needed to do inside the house, which I didn't get all of it done. Uh, I'm not going to say, I, Melissa and I decided my black diesel, it, the box is so rusty on it that you can move it up and down. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. And, you know, I've got 300 and uh, probably almost 319,000 miles on it now. So we've been looking for a while and I we ended up buying another truck. Um, but I bought it out of Louisiana because when I bought this black one here, I had it less than six months and it had already started popping rust on the, on the, on the box. You know, I bought it from a dealership and I'm sure they just went through and did a quick mud job and paint. Anyway, I needed to I'm going down to work on the Louisiana house on the 18th, so I needed to, I already paid for my flight, but then I needed to get somebody to drive me from here to the airport, which is a little over, you know, about two, two hours and 20 minutes maybe, and Melissa has somebody flying in from another state that she is going to train uh, doing what she does because they're going to have their own office or whatever in Nebraska, I think. Anyway, they're coming in on the 17th, so she can't drive me down. So then I got a hold of my daughter, Sarah, and she's going to come up here on the 17th, pick me up, drive me down, drop me off at a hotel in Minneapolis, and then that hotel has free shuttle service, you know, to get me to the airport. So then I'll fly down there, pick up the truck, spend the, you know, 10 days to two weeks down there putting the upper kitchen cabinets in on that house and doing a few things and then I'll drive it back up here. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say about it until I get it. You know, I have paid for it, but I, I don't have it. So, you know, until I'm driving it, we'll just pretend I never said anything. But anyway, that's what I was doing today. And I wanted to come out here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, maybe an hour out here, but I want to get the base of this cut so that tomorrow I can do some work on this as well as cut some wood because they're still saying it's going to get to 23 degrees tomorrow. Uh, and this time of year that is like a summer day. That's going to be beautiful if it's not really windy. Oh, yesterday my mind was starting to get garbled thinking of all the different things and then taking the project too far. So all I want to do right now is figure out exactly what I want that base to be. And I just so I need to find the narrowest one I've got. That one's 19 and an eighth. I think that was the narrowest. Some of these grates um, I bought. Some of them, like this one here, would have come out of a barbecue. Um, so they just come from all different places. But uh, looks like 19 and an eighth is my smallest. So I'll go with that. 
that because the next one's up for 19 and a half. Poker and I've got my corners. And then I've got this piece that's coming out, okay? This is from the top looking down. I slide my rack in here. You always can get past this one. But then if you go at a little bit of an angle, we know it's not gonna fall off here, but it'll hit against here. And that's so frustrating. You gotta pull it out and push it back in. If I'm wide enough, or deep enough, the rack will end right about here. Nice thing about that is also like if you're changing the uh, chips and stuff on the bottom, you can just push the rack back and get better access in there. So I wanna stay a little bit wider than what it was before, which was 17. Kinda of wanna go 20, but uh, I need to figure that out on this board. Well, I've been trying to edit this video now for three days, and the one you're watching right now. And this whole beginning part of the video, I just cut out about 15 or 20 minutes of me talking. And it wasn't every clip. I was going through doing different things, trying to figure out size-wise what I want, and basically just thinking out loud, which I do in a lot of videos, and people enjoy that, but this bored the crap out of me. It's like, I've gotta cut this out. So <laughs> I'm pulling it out. We'll start from right here and go forward, because I just can't put it all together. It's like, I'll say this part and then try to do this part, and I just can't get it to go, and I've gotta get this video uh, edited and, and up. Um, as though as you're sitting right there as the camera to your right, the almost finished smoker is sitting there, I can see it. So I've got to move forward on this. So anyway, I might do a video afterwards uh, and do it on probably Joe and Zach's survival, like more of a how to build a smoker where I can show the drawings and everything and the different sizes. But for right now, let's just get through this project so we can get on to the next one. It doesn't matter how many workspaces I have uh, cutting boards. It's just nice doing it on the saw horses. So I'm going to set these up for cutting the next part. our base. Did we ever figure out exactly how tall it was going to be? 62. So that'd be from here, 15. I'm going to cut my actual interior pieces 55 inches, but I want to lay this out because I want 15 inches to this 2x4 top, and then we're going to do 10, 15, 20. Since I have a 2x6, I'm going to cut that. Instead of the edges being inch and a half by inch and a half, they're going to be inch and a half the critical way. And then they'll be just a little bit under inch and 7 eighths the other way. Then I can get three out of one of those two by sixes. What I'm doing now is just cutting some this is just aluminum coil stock used for doing aluminum overhang. 
and I want to cover the bottom piece on this because it's green treated. The rest of the smoker, even if I do it out of plywood, I mean, I'd be doing it out of CVX versus OSB. And I remember when I had my other smoker, I think when I did the video, a lot of people complained, you know, oh, you can't make it out of plywood because there's going to be glue. And to be honest, the one I had, the wooden one I had before that one, I made that whole thing out of OSB, and um, which is, you know, oriented strand board, so it's just all them big chips that are glued together. I used that thing for 10 years and never had a problem. But with the other plywood, if you think about it, a piece of CDX is just a whole bunch of layers that are glued together. But the glue is in here. This piece on the inside or outside is just a solid veneered piece of plywood. And I, I could actually just care less about any of that. About, you know, I don't think there's any glue that's going to get in there. I used that smoker for probably 15 years, never had a problem. Hundreds of pounds of jerky went through it. But the green treated, I don't want the green treated uh, smell and whatever's in here going up into the meat. So I definitely want to cover the bottom. I finally get to use some of these little nails. I collect them at work when, you know, they'll use a partial box and the rest gets, can't be returned so it gets thrown out. I just bring it back and put it in the workshop and you never need to use these little white nails. So it'll be nice to use some of them up. Now that I overlap the metal this way, I will want to make this the front of the smoker because say I've got that heat plate in here and I pull it out and I, you know, you've got 15 inches to put your stuff in, your pan, if you don't pull the pan out, and then I want to just push it back. Well, if it's on this side, if this is the front, I could catch on that, which would really bug the crap out of me. So we'll do it this way, we'll never have to worry about it. One thing to remember, like I'm using cedar here, so I don't have to drill it out. I'm not really worried about it cracking, but you don't want to get too close to the edge because then it will crack out. And also whenever you're doing anything like this, don't put both screws in the center because once you get a center line like that, then it might split. By separating it just a little bit, you're in a whole different groove of the wood in the grain and you have much less of a chance of it splitting out. Well now for the front and back piece, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the pitch for the roof on here. Uh, normally I would use a uh, framing square, but I don't have one, but you can easily do it with a speed square also. Just got to start in a little bit. And to do that, first we would, I'm going to put a 512 on this roof. So we'll mark the short angle of the 512. And then you flip your speed square around run it on that mark and that will give you the long angle and then we're just going to carry that through and then I like to go ahead and cut this one first because with such a long angle if you're off even an eighth inch you're gaining you know a half inch onto it so I like to cut one side first then hook onto here and then measure the total length of it.
and I could do the whole speed square thing again, but now I have a pattern, so I might as well make it simpler. And we'll just line this up and mark this and cut it. And since we're going to need one for both sides, no reason to measure two of them. Well, it's time for me to go in for the night, but there we have the general frame of the new smoker. Tomorrow morning I'll be out here early loading up that stove. I actually have, uh, the guy's name is John. He's going to be showing up here around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And he's going to drop a few things off. He's a subscriber to the channel. I've never met him in person before, but I talked to him quite a bit. And he's coming up here and he's going to go to his deer camp. So, yeah, he should be here pretty early. So I want to get the stove going so it's nice and warm. And then I'll figure out what the next step on this is. I know for the front door, I definitely want this wall to be a plywood wall. It's just so easy to put that on there. It's very rigid, so it stays right where you put it. And I can cut the door out of that so easily. And it'll, you know, like the other one, that door worked for 15 years. It just worked awesome. On the sides, I might want to do some of the refurbished deck boards. I guess we'll figure that out tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the morning. They're still talking a possible inch of snow tonight, but it's like only three below. It feels pretty good compared to what it was this morning. Good morning, everybody. 11 degrees. But it's kind of breezy out. Stuff. He said we can bring in all the other stuff and get it thought out. He's, gonna, he's got a bunch of there peeled already. Oh, sure. That came from the hobby fund on this, but yeah, I usually don't. Where are you hitting up in Louisiana to get your cards? 85, 18, 20, 20. Okay. So he's so going to pick me up on the 17th at 130, coming down to the hotel that has a shuttle service. Oh, sure. And then I'll get there and drive and fly down. Okay. And then you're just going to sell the King Ranch? I will sell that one and keep the other one. Next week I hope to get it all reliable because it's going to sit in there and not be for six years. I'm sure you want to add your trash in it, you know. Like, the trailer, four wheeler on there, put the trailer on it. Uh, right, right. Okay. And that's okay because I'm using that in the video. But just for everyday fishing, yeah. it's so much nicer just to drive out. But I remember one time I was up with my street quarter on white for and I drove out, it's the only one that's during the week. Didn't have a, I had a day off or something, I don't know. Anyway, I drove out there, went fishing, to see other people are doing it. And as I'm sitting in my fish house, the water is coming up a little bit in the hole. Sure. And I went out a while later, and here the whole place where my truck is was wet. Oh, so yeah. I had that thing up and yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had 12 inches of ice at that time, 10 or 12. So from then on, if it don't have 14 inches. Yeah. And I don't even know if I would drive my diesel out. I wouldn't. You know, I've, I'm, I'm waiting to get my half time now. Yeah, that's, uh, we have a ice Well, John stopped by this morning and uh, dropped off a few things. Uh, a thing that holds up the back of the snowmobile and some more of the little snowmobile dolly thingies that go underneath the skis and the track. And then we had a few other things that we took care of today. And, uh, and then he was going off to their deer camp uh, just to check things out because it's winter time and he hadn't been there for a while. Well, I got 
got all these pieces cut. I'm not going to be out here the whole entire day, but I will be out here off and on. It's getting there. It's about 10 after 12. I'm going to run inside and see uh, if Melissa, how close lunch is to being done. And I don't know, I might even get plywood for all the sides of this and then put uh, the cedar boards on the outside. I don't have, I thought I had a tongue and groove router bit set and I don't. I have a, well it's kind of like a tongue and groove set for doing raised panel cabinet doors, but that's not going to help me on the sideboards here. Three thirty in the afternoon now. After lunch I was just in there, we watched a show on TV and had a couple little things to do and then I was talking to Melissa and there was a few things that she was going to order from, do like a home delivery thing. And I said, you know, I kind of want to go up to L&M because as much as I didn't like those new grates that I bought for the smoker, the uh, once I got it, the part built like you've seen it, they actually fit really nice. So I'm going to get a couple more of those and then I'll stop at the store and pick her stuff up. two more of those rack things so I bought both of them and then got a window scraper and some exterior spar varnish. Oh, I'm glad I made this thing plenty wide and I didn't have to cut those so they just fit in there perfectly. Not much more I can do on the smoker right now. I will get this finished in the next video. I'll go early next week. I'll, I'll run up and do the whole thing in plywood and then I can put deck boards on the outside of that if I want. Melissa has wanted this little thing only six and a half inches wide, a couple inches tall that can hang between the doorway trim and the uh, chalkboard so it holds an eraser and some chalk. And she's been talking about it for over a year, so I'm super simple project. I might as well get it done.
I have to run in and see which stain color it's going to be. There's a chalkboard right next to it that has a stained border. I know it's not going to be the middle one to drift with, that's just too light. I kind of like the one on the right for how dark it is, but I don't see red. I can see though, right there, that there is some red in it. So I need to run in and ask Melissa. She said to go with that dark one, the provincial, so that's what we're going to do. The other one is closer in tone, but it's got a lot of red in it, she said. So we will skip that one. I'm going to run inside. It's about 10 to 8. I'll give that little box maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes to dry. And then I'll come out here and put a coat of uh, clear satin on it. I'm not a real big one for waiting 24 hours for stain to dry before putting that first coat on. Everything's going to get sanded afterwards anyway. Well, just like I said, I made it back out here to get this one coat put on here. It's just been nasty today. I mean, in warm weather, it's still 14 degrees outside. The one inside said I think it's 12, but um, just been windy, and now that wind is really picking up. And I think tonight it's going down to 10 below, and tomorrow the high, I think it's zero. And then tomorrow night, I think it drops down to 20, 20 something below. It'll be a little bit chilly. The stove is loaded up, it's a quarter to ten, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning everybody. We got down to a little more than ten below zero Fahrenheit. I was out here at uh, a couple minutes after six and put wood in the stove. And then I sanded this little box, so I'm going to get one more coat of satin poly on here and then let it dry and it'll be good. A couple of hours I should be able to bring that inside. A lot of people have been asking about the chickens and the ducks in the video, so I did show them a little bit uh, in the last video, but I thought I'd come out here. We keep three heated water buckets going. The two green ones are two gallon, I think, or two and a half, whatever, and then the blue one is like a gallon and a half. And, uh, you know, they got their feed. We keep a chicken block in here they can pick on. And yeah, I mean, we don't heat the chicken coop at all, but they do just fine. Inside this part of the chicken coop building, we've got one heated cooler right there for cats. 
We've got a box up there that's heated because some of them are there's like one that doesn't really like going in the cooler. It likes it to be more open so that'll sit in there and and it can look out okay, but it stays nice and warm with the it had they have heating pads on the bottom of them. So yeah, we've got these two here. We keep one heated bowl of water right here for the cats. And we have another one that's up by the back door there on the little deck where the barbecues are. We have two heated coolers right there, and that is where they all get fed. So any of the outside cats, then Melissa can keep her eye on them all the time and see who's doing good and who isn't doing good. So there's the two coolers there. We've got the two in the building behind me, and then in the cat trailer or whatever you want to call it, there's I think six more. I'm not sure. There's more coolers that have heating blankets in than there are the wild cats that are running around here. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, we used to feed inside that building, but now she has switched it, so everything gets fed up there. If there's a big snowstorm coming, then we'll go into the cat barn and here into the chicken coop barn, and we'll do a cat food station for them so they don't have to go out in two feet of snow. But we really haven't had anything like that this year yet. I get questions about, uh, you see Joni, but you don't see Chunky, and Chunky is more of a mama's boy, likes to hang around with Melissa, and Joni likes to hang out with me. So if I bring Chunky into the workshop, he'll just sniff around, and then he'll stand by the door, because he wants to go in with Melissa. It's already 10 below zero right now, and it's going down to, I don't know what it was, 20 or 23 below tonight and there's some wind, so that wind chill will be down around that 45 below zero Fahrenheit tonight. I don't think I ever showed the towel holder once it got done, and the whatever you want to call the shelf and the towel holder, so there that is. And there's Melissa's new chalk holder and eraser holder. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. In the next one, we should make some good progress on that smoker. I've got to get some wood cut, because when I leave for Louisiana, I want a good supply cut. Uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping to get Old Reliable back this week. If I can just get a ride down there, I'll pick it up and drive it back up here. So stay tuned. I will see you guys on the next video. Melissa's in there making fajitas right now. It smells good.